thank you to be here with us uh, to listen uh, about API governance at uh, L'Oréal. Uh, so, a short uh, introduction of the agenda of today. So, uh, we will present um, our um, our team and uh, API and data strategy at L'Oréal. We will talk about API governance, how we are doing enablement at L'Oréal, and how we are measuring our enablement. Uh, about uh, the context at uh, L'Oréal, so in uh, 2020, L'Oréal adopted API first uh, strategy. In order to support this strategy, the Center of Enablement API was created, led by uh, Julien Brun. A little bit uh, later, uh, the Center of Enablement API um, was uh, renamed uh, Center of Enablement API and um, EDA. Uh, so our team is organized into streams. We have a technical stream and a business stream. In the technical stream, we have um, technical experts, EDA experts and um, API experts that are working uh, very closely with the uh, vendors. Uh, they are following the, the roadmap with them and they are ensuring that uh, we have the um, right uh, uh, features that are needed for, uh, for L'Oréal. Uh, on the API, we are uh, using a PG platform and for the EDA, we are uh, using um, Kafka Confluent platform. On the business stream here with uh, Marina, uh, we will present you and uh, our uh, aim on the team is to work very closely with uh, API product owners to provide them the right uh, support to enable them on the API journey to work around the, the processes uh, and to provide them the right uh, tools um, in order to be easier for them to design the APIs, to publish them, and to follow the uh, API uh, life uh, cycle. Um, about API and uh, data strategy. So, um, uh, in 2020, when the API for strategy was uh, adopted, also uh, data strategy was adopted also. And here the API and the data started to build and to work together and to be fully aligned. So in the data side, the um, L'Oréal um, uh, structured the data in 18, um, 18 domains. Uh, and here the APIs uh, uh, are fully aligned with the data because uh, the APIs are all, also uh, structured in uh, uh, and aligned with uh, the 18 domains. So each data domain has uh, and uh, own the, his APIs. So if we have the product uh, domain, uh, we'll have also all the APIs that are uh, belong to uh, product domains. APIs, they have in the naming convention of the APIs, we will find the data domain for which belongs. Uh, before to, to have in place uh, this, uh, this strategy, uh, we um, at L'Oréal we collected a lot, uh, a lot of data, different uh, from different sources for different uh, reasons, for the for different aims. But it was very difficult to be used by um, by the each product, uh, by the each uh, by the each uh, project. Sorry, uh, because uh, uh, the data was not having um, a clear ownership and um, also uh, the quality of the data was not uh, what was expected by by the project um, also the data was stored in the different uh, systems without to, to have a uh, naming standardization so we could find a type of data with the same business uh, meaning but with a different naming on the different systems so at L'Oréal in 2020, when the API first and data strategy was put it in place, the first things that was uh, was needed is to have um, a strong ownership 
around the data and the APIs. So we have the ownership that uh, uh, for each domain, we have a data product owner that ensure the ownership of the data. Also, they ensure the standardization of, um, of the data. So here we have a data catalog or all the uh, business attributes. Uh, they, uh, they have uh, the same uh, the same naming and the same description in all the systems. A business value, a business attribute will have the same naming everywhere. Uh, in this way, it was possible to control the data quality and the API here are coming to give accessibility to the data and also to put in place a security level. In this way, we'll be aware who is consuming which type of data for which reason. So, in order to ensure this as a technical platform, we are using uh, Google Cloud the Data Platform for um, the data and as I said a little bit later, RPG for APIs. Uh, on the data, the data is structured on the three, the three layers. We have the raw data that are coming directly from the systems on the um, data platform. Uh, here the data, we have a second layer where the data is structured by domain and here we apply the standardization. So here we'll find the data with a clear uh, naming convention. And we have a third layer where the project can combine the different data from the different domains uh, here with a consumption layer. So here we will find the data ready for the project. Uh, because, as I said, the APIs are fully aligned with the data at L'Oreal, we have also three types of APIs. We have the system APIs are uh, the APIs exposed directly by by the application and here we'll have uh, the APIs exposed directly by the SIP or the Salesforce as we are working with a lot of uh, SaaS application uh, we um, expose directly the APIs provided by the um, by the application themselves uh, without to to do any modification and any customization for uh, for L'Oreal we have a second type of APIs, the business APIs. Here, the APIs are fully modelized and uh, um, are uh, we are doing uh, the the model, the design that uh, has uh, and bring uh, a business uh, business value for uh, for L'Oreal. And here we can have the APIs as uh, uh, product 360, consumer 360. These business APIs are relying on the system uh, system APIs. And as I said, for the data, we have a third layer of the API consumer APIs. And here the application can do a bundle of different type of APIs or can do a um, subtraction of the, the APIs. And the application will consume exactly the scope of the APIs that is needed for uh, for them. Uh, here, the business, the consumer APIs are relying on the business APIs and system APIs. So we have the three type of APIs, and each of uh, each APIs has his own governance. Uh, for the um, system APIs. Uh, the application owner is also the um, API product owner. So uh, I'm the guy who knows the best the, the application. So I know exactly which type of API uh, my application will expose. So also I am an application owner, but also I am the API product owner for, uh, for my system APIs. Uh, for the business APIs, as I said, we have the data product owner, uh, which it's in charge with the data, and also is the API product owner because it's the the person that knows the best the value of the data and know the best the meaning and the value the business value of the data. And uh, for the consumer APIs, the use case product owner. It's also the API product owner because he understand the best which type of data needs to be consumed by uh, by his uh, project. So here uh, you can see we have different type of ownership for our API. So we try that the ownership to be close closer by the application or by the data 
and to control the best the, the accessibility and the value of the data. Because the next step, we are close, we are working uh, close uh, closer uh, and uh, with the um, API uh, community, API product owner community, in order to enforce the um, the practices, the best practices that we are putting in place, in order to bring new new features for the enablement. But if we are talking about enablement, I will let Marina to explain how we are doing at L'Oréal the enablement. Hello, Marina. Hello, Isana. Thank you. Sure. Um... So, as uh... Okay. okay. Is good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so to uh, onboard our API product owner and future consumer, um, they first need to be upskill in the uh, in in the topic. So our team proposed two different training. The first one um, more for. Um, business people uh, where we introduce the uh, API, uh, what is an API, the API lifecycle and the governance, especially their role as API owner. And a second training uh, for people who are already have a knowledge and skills on API and they want to um, go deeper in the API management with the best practices. So we propose this uh, training monthly and IT and business people uh, can register to this training. Um, and during this training, we also present our different tools such as the API portal. So this portal was built with Pronovix using Drupal and is accessible from all L'Oreal employees uh, where they can consult the API catalog. Uh, as we have different uh, profile uh, for different interests that consult the portal, we use also uh, uh, this uh, this intent portal to share a documentation uh, with our getting started, um, where they can find any uh, information about the strategy, the best practices, and the governance and processes where we take some time to build a step-by-step -step tutorial to help them to go through the different steps. For example, a data project owner from finance has a use case and wants to uh, build a business API. So first step would be to design an API and within uh, each process, we want to make it as simple as possible. So for the design part, we use Gravity API designer tool, uh, which provide a really good user friendly interface uh, in a graphical way to hide the technical complexity. So a business or even IT use this uh, tool to build the structure and then export it, it automatically generate an open API specification. So with this specification, the API owner uh, is able to publish it in the APG platform and in the API uh, API portal using our uh, service request. We work here with ServiceNow team to build different forms that are fully automatized to help them to manage in a more simpler way uh, their API. So here they just have to fill in the form and upload the swagger and the, the form will automatically trigger um, actions to publish it in APG and in the portal. Imagine now a few months after you want to know as an API owner what the what are the feedbacks so you know, the consumers uh, feels about the uh, feel about the API so we built a um, a feature uh, on the portal to give a note so rating say any consumer can give uh, a comment and uh, the API owners are able to find the list of these comments in this page uh, as we are in a continuous improvement process the, it's a way to identify uh, where and how they can improve the API for the for the coming versions how actually an API looks like in the portal. So we have two types of documentation. The first one is more technical one coming from the, the open API specification. And the second one is the functional documentation. Uh, we build the template to help them to 
build this documentation is uh, we this documentation is helpful to uh, understand for any uh, future consumer to uh, understand why uh, uh, the yes, API is used for and if uh, this API could uh, cover my use case or not so I can consume it and uh, so it's a more business oriented documentation that we push uh, API owners to build it. Uh, also, as, men as mentioned by Liliana, we are a COE API and EDA, uh, event and API. So we want also this portal to uh, include this port and we are building a product catalog. A product would be uh, a combination of uh, Open API and Async API and the user will be able to register to this product. Also, as you, I think you saw, we we work uh, in different features to uh, deliver uh, the right tools to help them. But it also, as a COE, uh, important to take time to build document um, to build communication and to share it with your community to have visibility on what have been done. And uh, so, in that way, we have two type of communication. The first one, uh, these are comics to uh, explain in another way uh, the different. Uh, steps to follow in the process. So here is how as a, a IT owner uh, and also API owner, I have to what I have to do to publish my API. Uh, and the other um, communication is our newsletter where we highlight uh, the uh, the roadmap and the new features in the API marketplace and uh, the API portal and also links to the to the portal and highlight also uh, new APIs coming from the business. Also, another role in the uh, uh, in the API owner uh, scope is uh, how to uh, follow up your API uh, performance and consumption. So, in that way, our uh, team built different uh, dashboard for different personas. So, this is a sample of the dashboard for uh, API product owner. So, in the first screenshot, you can follow up the performance of your API. In the second one, the quality review based on four axes: compliance, security, maintainability, and sustainability. Um, we can also follow up the API usage with the number of calls and um, also the consumers by uh, identifying uh, which app uh, is using your API. And another KPI that we want to improve is uh, in the business API part uh, regarding the functional documentation. Uh, I think you also face this uh, problem. Uh, we have a lot of APIs, but without a good documentation, it's difficult to activate and make this API reusable. So we will uh, launch a challenge soon with our API product owner community uh, with prices to motivate them to complete this uh, functional documentation and improve these KPIs. Um, so this is only a part of what I've been done in the team, and we continue to um, to 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 work and to improve the um, uh, the tools and uh, the enablement around the the API. Uh, and we strongly uh, believe that uh, the collaboration uh, in the collaboration with business and and IT regarding uh, regarding APIs. Thank you for your attention.